In today's video, we're going to remove a 52 millimeter VGA component from the circuit board. So I do I normally will measure my component with a micrometer, it's 52 millimeters. And I'm going to go to my temp setting, and for this board, we're going to use the lead free profile. So I'll go to my view my database, I'll select lead free. We'll load it. I'm going to confirm that my VGA is set at 52 millimeters. I'm going to save these settings in the library just in case we change anything, and then I'm going to load them. When we're making a profile, we can confirm um, that we have our Z axis position programmed correctly. So Right now, I'm going to go and just go to my manual settings. I'm going to get the components just roughly centered here, and I'm going to use the manual controls. And I'm going to move this down. Then, when the pickup tube gets close to the component, I'm going to switch to low speed. You can turn on our side view lights if you want to see, and I'm just going to slowly go down until the pickup tube touches the top of the component. There we go, about right there. And if I look at my z-axis reading on here, it says 186.7. So normally I'll, I'll just round it off to 190. So I can go back here to my temp setting again. And we are set at 185. Let's change it to 190. So we just set our z-axis, and the z-axis is the distance from home position to when the pickup tube touches the top of the chip. So we have our chip height set for this, for this uh, profile. We have our chip uh, XY size for, set for this profile. So we're all good. So we're going to save our settings in the library, confirm. We're going to load these settings. Once it loads, the yellow screen box will come up, and then we're going to go ahead and we'll go back here. And we're ready to run the profile. So down here, the little box we can run through is weld, which will be solder, mount, which will be mount, a full, full automatic program where it picks up the component, you align it, it mounts it, it places it, and the leaf loads it. And we're going to just be doing the simple remove profile here. And so to reset everything to home position, I will just press stop. I'm going to turn off my side view lights. And I'm ready to go. So. I've got my board roughly centered. Again, we're using a 52 millimeter chip. I have a 70 millimeter bottom nozzle, and I have a 65 millimeter top nozzle. For this board, since it's not that big and it's not reaching out into the, the area heater areas, I'm just using top and bottom heat. I'm not using any of the, um, the area heaters at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim those all off. So we're ready to go. So I'll just press start, you can press start on the touch screen, you can press start on the machine. They have two buttons, mechanical or software. And the machine's going to move to the um, alignment position. And we can align the component into the nozzle. So a little screen will come up. It allows you to do zoom in and zoom out. Right now, we are zoomed all the way out. We have our top nozzle light. We can turn it off. Our top light, we can turn it off. Our bottom light, we can turn off. So if I turn my bottom light on, We'll see our component here. If I turn my top light on, we'll see the nozzle. The nozzle's in blue. Let's see, the, see if I turn the nozzle, you can see here, the nozzle's in blue. What we want to do, we want to center our component into the nozzle. So I have my micrometer adjust. I can move my component left or right. And so I just want my nozzle's right here, my component is right here. So we're just going to make equal space between the nozzle edge and the component edge. It doesn't have to be super perfect. Just eye tell us about where you're comfortable with it. Okay, so now we are centered um, into the heat nozzles. It's ready for a roll. Before I remove, I, I prefer to put a little tacky flux on, just run some flux on the component. This will help transfer the heat. It'll help reduce any chance of oxidation on the pads, 
and it'll also assure that we get better heat transfer and that we don't lift any pads for some reason or another in case um, we didn't get a smooth heat transfer. So I prefer an external flux. It, it, it just um, will make things a little bit, makes life a little bit easier. Okay, so our external flux is on. The next thing I want to do is I just want to monitor my profile and make sure my component is getting hot enough. And so I'm, for this one, I'm just going to stick the component or the thermocouple under the side of the component here. And tape it down. I mean, I'm looking for a temperature on this, an external thermocouple temperature, an external thermocouple temperature at the edge of the component of around 235 to 250. Smaller components, probably 235 is good. Um, you get a bigger component like this, you might want about 245 or 250 to achieve complete reflow across the whole chip. So, I, so I'm com comfortable. I've got it centered. I've got my thermocouple on. I just press confirm and the rest the machine is going to do the rest. I can turn my side view lights on. So it's going to go down. It's going to slow down at our slow down speed setting. It's going to touch the component and then it's going to rebound. I think we have a set for two and a half millimeters. So I'll go to my HDMI switch here and switch to the side view camera. Okay, our camera's on center. You can see our components here. You can see the flux here right now. It'll, once it starts heating up, the flux will suck up under the component. Um, let's see what else we can see. So we can see, we can see our components here. That's our pickup tube right here. And you can see there's about a two and a half millimeter space between the pickup tube and the component. And so when you, especially when you're installing, you want to watch this gap. Make sure that you don't have a board that's warping. Some boards may warp down. Some boards may warp up. If I'm installing a chip, we want to make sure it doesn't warp up and then push up against the um, the pickup tube and cause the, the chip to compress, you know, get pushed down on and then cause the bridging. And so anytime during the profiles running, you can go to the manual operation here and you can use the manual controls. You can move the head up and down um, if you need to. So if the board was warping up, um, I can move the head up a little bit. If I have extreme warping, um, then that we get into tweaking the profiles. There's ways we can adjust profiles to reduce warping. There are other ways we can uh, use hardware to support the board to reduce warping. So um, if you have really high quality boards, normally they don't have any warping issues. On some of the lower end, uh, cheap, cheap consumer product boards, they're not made as sturdy, so they'll warp and you have to compensate for that problem. If right now this board here is a pretty um, sturdy board, We've been using it for sample, or for demos, and I, I probably reflow this is probably at least the sixth or seventh or eighth time I'm reflowing it, and um, it's been holding up pretty good. So we we replaced this chip out several times for other demo videos. So right now I'm just going to go back to my uh, touch screen. Zoom in a little bit more here. And so while it's running, I can go to my temp menu and I can select curve analysis. And in the curve analysis, it'll show top temp, bottom temp, IR temp. <coughs> Those are all the readings from my internal thermocouples. Then we have five external thermocouples. We could watch the... <coughs> excuse me. We can watch the temperature right now. We're only using external thermocouple number one. And at the end of the profile, we want that, like I said, to be around 235 to 250. While this profile is running, at any time during the running, I can put a, plug a USB into the USB port. And I can put save to USB. So if I want to snap, after what is done, if I want to snapshot of the whole profile, I can save it to USB while it's running. And I want to see what I want to save. Uh, pictures of what temperatures 
readings I have at each stage, I can pretty much save a picture of the screen, the USB, at any time while it's running or after it's run. It doesn't save a full library of these, so you have to save, you have to make sure you save it every time you run a profile for what you want. When you, when you go on to the next board, this will get deleted, this data will get deleted, and then I'll have the data for the new board, which you can save to your USB. So instead of, this is um, a touchscreen type machine without an external PC, so you have to save all your profiles to, to USB. Uh, I should clarify, you should save your profile data. All the profiles that you make will, are unlimited. You can save a limited amount of profiles in the software. It's just when you run a profile and you want the graph data, uh, you'll save that to USB. Okay, so the profile's moving right along here. You see what your graph is going to print it out. And so what we'll do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, just pause this a bit in a minute. We can see that the flux is getting underneath the component over here very well. There we go, that's a better picture of the component. If I go back here, I can check up my Profile, my profile is going to go to 290. I'll hold on for 50 seconds. Come back here, I'm going to go to my temp menu, curve analysis. Right now we're at 260 on the top and the bottom. The thermal couple is at 190. So we're going to let it run. And we'll come back um, in a minute when it gets near the end of the profile. Okay, we're near the end of the profile. And we can see that, we take a little probe here, you can see the components float all the way across, it's loose. So when you, when you use uh, external solder under the component, it'll sort of float, uh, external, when you use external flux under the component, it'll float on the flux. So we can see it's loose. We're just going to let the profile run to the end. We're almost about 225, about 235. And we're there, and it's picking up. That's our removal, and then I'll place it in the upper nest, and then it'll go into a cool-down phase. Okay, so that covers um, how to remove a BGA using the ZMR730A BGA reworkstation. Thanks for watching.